So first let's dedicate again the class to Tsipora Fega Batlibi that unfortunately had a stroke as in, in a coma. Should have refuah shlema immediately. And Baruch Hashem, I'm back. Bemet Baruch Hashem. And always when I'm back, I come back with some, some message that Hashem allows me to see. And I always like to share it and make some, uh, to learn something out of it. And uh, Baruch Hashem, I had a very interesting two weeks. First, two weeks ago, I fell down the stairs. And I somehow was able to grab my, myself on the railing in order for me not to totally fall down. And the movement hurt my back that I had a hernia disc, which I was literally five days in bed. I could not move from unbelievable pain. And of course, like I said, I had 50 advisors telling me what to do. Put your legs up, put your legs down, put your hands like this, put your hands like that, put cold water, hot water, boiling water, don't cough, don't breathe, do this, do that. I had so many advisors, lie on your stomach, lie on your back, go to a doctor, don't go to a chiropractor, go to a masseuse, go to shiatsu, go to acupuncture. I had so many advisors that I decided not to listen to anybody. And Baruch Hashem, Baruch Hashem, and Baruch Hashem, I didn't listen to anybody, and Baruch Hashem, I didn't listen to anybody, and I listened to, to my gut feeling, and one of the, the advice that I got, which was main, the most the advice that I got from everybody, is don't go on this trip. This is a sign from Hashem that you should not go to the trip to London. Cancel it and just don't go. And I was like, no. I actually think it's a sign Dafka to go. And you will see that Saturday night I'm going to be walking and Sunday morning when I have to go to the airport I'll feel much better. And Baruch Hashem, on Thursday I was able to somehow crawl out of bed and go to a doctor who literally a miracle worker. I don't know if we're allowed to advertise in public because we're recording, but if you, you should definitely go and check him out here in Tzfat, Dr. Levy. Literally a miracle worker. I, I was in excruciating pain that I couldn't, couldn't even move. I literally couldn't even cough. I would just, anything that I would do was unbelievable pain. And I somehow was able to leave the house and go to him. And he just touched me. And within half an hour of a little bit of work, I walked out. I walked out. And then I went again to him uh, Friday, Erev Shabbos. And I literally, I mean, I don't remember who was here on Shabbat. I was actually walking. And sure enough, with the help of Hashem, Saturday night I was already moving and Sunday morning I was able to fly. Now the whole week in London I had pain, but Baruch Hashem, all the lectures we organized that I'm sitting down, I had somebody helping me, carrying everything for me, but I was actually functioning. I may still have a lot of pain. I have a doctor's appointment after we've done this class, I have to go again. I'm still in pain, but I'm, I'm functioning. I'm walking. I'm, you know, Friday I came. I was like a little bit running. My wife was like, "Wow, you run." So, so we started the week that I was totally flat on my back and in 100% and not not normal pain. But my attitude was against all my advisors to cancel the trip. I was like, "No, there's something like this should not cancel my trip, especially when I'm going to do uh, Hashem's work." I, I had in five days 18 lectures from morning to night just imagine how packed the schedule was and it was unbelievable this was one of the most powerful trips I ever had uh, the success, spiritually of course I'm talking about the lectures were uh, unbelievable packed 
houses, I mean not a house, uh, like uh, the synagogues where it was, I was able to get into high schools when nobody was able to get into these high schools and talked with hundreds of teenagers and it was unbelievable, the, su the spiritual success was unbelievable, they made unbelievable. Even the, the next day we got feedback, emails from people, who, you know, how they, right away, this guy, the next day, he emailed me, he's like, you know, I started going with Titi. People send us all sorts of uh, comments. Spiritually, it was unbelievable success. And, but the whole week, I was still in pain. And very uncomfortable, it was hard for me to sleep, hard for me to move. And then came the highlight of the trip. And uh, on the way back to the airport, I'm already, I finished my shlichut, I'm done, and I'm driving, and wherever of you was ever in London, everything is so small there. It's so cramped into each other, everything is on top of each other, the highways, you know, I don't know how people drive there with big cars. Yeah, and forget about the left side. That I have no problem with the left side. I, uh, my mother's Australian. I spent a lot of, many time, many vacations in Australia. I know how to drive on the left side. That's the last problem. It was all small. Long story short, as I'm going to the airport, I'm already uh, relieved. The week is over. I'm back. I'm going to be home with my family. Somebody comes. There was a, a ramp to go on the highway and one lane goes into this highway, one lane goes into this highway and it kind of like funnels in together. Somebody came so fast, so close to me that I, I you know, I moved the car to the left that he's not going to bump into me and I bumped into the sidewalk and, and suddenly the whole car, I mean it was a pretty strong impact and the whole car starts shaking and I'm like no, no, Hashem, Hashem, no, no. We stopped the car because it was like right in front of a traffic light. I go out, a flat tire. Oh. I'm like, no, Hashem, come on. Like, somehow, I don't even know how I was able to do it. I pulled the car from the left lane and I went on the island where I can stop the car. And I was okay, in my mind, no problem. I'm going to break the record in changing tires. It will delay me in five minutes, ten minutes, no problem. I go out and I see two flat tires. Two flat tires. So even if I change one, what good would it do? I'm like, no, come on, Hashem. Why? What? Who? So I look into the tires. I said, you know, maybe, maybe it's not a flat tire. Sometimes when a tire hits the curve, the tire moves from the pressure from the rim and the air goes out. Sometimes that's what happens, and it's all air. I said, okay, maybe I just need to pump the air. Long story short, I look in the rear tire, I see the slash, and I look at the front tire, I can't find anything. So I start changing the tire, and I take out four of the bolts, and I come to the fifth one, it had like some, some weird lock that I could not figure out how to take out. Long story short, I go into the car and I'm in my eyes, in my mind, I'm already saying, okay, last trip I was in London, if you remember, I m missed my flight and I end up staying another three days in London. In my mind, I'm like, a shame, I don't want to stay here. I leave a message to my wife, I'm very sorry, but I think I'm not going to be spending Shabbat with you. Then I call right away the rental uh, uh, company to get uh, roadside assistance. And in the meantime, right away, phone calls to all sorts of places. First of all, phone call to the airline. I'm not going to make it. I already checked in. And maybe I can already book already the next flight. And, uh, you know, a whole hour. And then after everything was in the action, my, my wife is in the air, uh, with the airline company. My assistant is on with the rental company. Everybody's taking care of everything. Now, you know what's the most amazing thing? This is where, where now, now I'm just telling you the part of the history of what happened. This is where you see how Hashem is so amazing. And later on I'll tie everything together that you see how I figured it out. <clears throat> on the way to the airport, if you remember, 
Last time when I came from, back from the trip, I shared with you how I have a talent to come the last passenger to the flight. I, I, that's the rule with Mr. Anava. They always have to say my name, passenger, Anava, please come to the gate. This is the rule. I always come last to the flight. So now I was like, this time I'm coming early. And I left way, way, way in advance. Okay, on the way to the airport, it was a very busy morning. I finished the lecture on Wednesday night. I came home at 4 in the morning, where at 8.20 I had my first lecture in, in a synagogue, and then the whole morning I had lectures in the school, in the high school. So I came home at 4. I didn't even eat anything, nothing. So I packed everything, and on the way to the airport, I was like, you know what? I'm going to stop and get a cup of coffee. I'm not going to wait to... to um. So, my, my Yetzirah is telling me, don't stop, don't go do this detour, it will delay you, you want to be early at the airport, don't go to get your coffee. I was like, no, I want to get coffee. So, I go, I park, and, and go into this supermarket where they had a good coffee. On the way in, they have on the entrance, in the entrance of the supermarket, like a sushi bar. And my eye sees the sushi bar, and I'm telling myself, you know what, let me take a tray of sushi. I mean, I'm not hungry now. I'm going to get dinner on the plane. Uh, worst case, I give it to my kids, they like sushi. I was like, okay. So I look at the t flavors, and it was very, very cheap. I was like, you know what? Let me just take three trays of sushi. Eh, you never know. Worst case, I just give it to somebody. So I put in my basket three trays of sushi. I go to make the coffee. There was a stand with freshly made sandwiches, and they looked real good. I was like, you know what? I don't know. Let me take two sandwiches. Well, what bad can it do? As I'm walking to the register, I see like a, a lot of bottles of water. I was like, you know what? You know, the doctor told me to drink a lot of water. I took a big bottle of water. On the way out, I see like a basket full of uh, snacks. Uh, I end up going out with bags full of stuff, <laughs> which I never buy anything. I never. I don't like going on planes with bags. So I like travel light, especially when I'm late, so it's harder to run with bags. So for some weird reason, Hashem gave me this spark of prophecy or a spark of Ruach HaKodesh to buy tons of food. As I'm sitting on the highway waiting for the, for the rescue to come, and I'm like, you know, I was like, wait a minute, I'm not going to make the flight. I'm going to be starving. Suddenly I pull out one of the sandwiches. I'm, I was hungry. I have a sandwich. Long story short, the guy comes, rescues me, takes me to their car rental place. Now this is another amazing thing. I'm giving you a bunch of details, then I'm going to tie everything together. When I landed and I rented the car, they gave me the deal of the century. 28 pounds for five days of a car rental. That's like, a, I don't know, like 140 shekels, 150 shekels. Now, their deal is they tell you, they tell you, you have to take insurance. Either you take the basic, the better insurance, the more better insurance, or we put a security deposit on your, we take a security deposit from your credit card for the amount of 1,250 pounds. If you bring the car exactly how you took it, you get your deposit back. If not, we're holding your money. I was like, I want that option. Because in my mind, I'm not gonna have any issue. I give them my credit card and it's a new credit card that has the chip. You know those credit cards? they put in they don't slide it swipe I mean he puts it in he tells me what's your code the code I don't know my code yeah. he's like well if you don't know the code I can't use the card and I tell him but I just saw you with the guy next to me with the same thing with the chip you what I saw you swipe the card she says yeah that's to pay for the rental but not to hold the security I can't hold a deposit on your card by swiping only by the chip. So I told him, but I don't have the code. I don't know the code. 
So he's like, okay, so I can't hold the security. So I said, okay, so what's my option? You have to take insurance. So I said, okay, but if I take insurance, it's going to, from 28 pounds, that's going to jump now very, very high. Okay, so I end up having to take insurance. That bedieved, Baruch Hashem. Okay, so I come and return the car, and they, of course they see the tires all messed up. And I come to square the bill, and he tells me, okay, I'm very sorry. You're lucky that you have insurance, because I, you know, it covers everything. But the only thing that the insurance that you took is not covering is tires. <laughs> so, so, so it covered the body, I mean the body got dents and scratch and the wheels, but not the tires. So that, they charged me 350 pounds for the two tires. 350 pounds. And that's, it's not pounds for the weight, it's 350 pounds for the currency. That's like four and a half shekels a pound. Okay. Then in the, in the car rental place, uh, first of all, I got stuck there because it was very late, so there wasn't any shuttle to the airport. And then the only flight that I could get was on the other side of London. It's a different uh, airport. I was supposed to leave from Heathrow, and I got a flight from Luton, which is the complete other side of London. And it was a flight, that's the only option, lives at 9.40 in the morning, meaning landing at 4.40 in the afternoon in Israel. So I was like, okay, no problem. I'll go sleep by my parents. My parents live pretty close to the airport. I'll just sleep by them. I'll spend Shabbat there. And what's say Shabbat? I'll come back home. In the meantime, I was trying to say, okay, if I leave early, I still have time to make it to Tzfat. But let's see what happens. Okay, long story short, a friend comes to pick me up from the car rental place where I'm standing there outside like for three hours. And what happens when you're standing outside for three hours? You're hungry. I have sushi. I have snacks. I have sandwiches. Now the funniest thing is, if I had a lot of water, when I was changing the tire, my hands were black. But I had this huge thing of water. I was able to wash my hands. Hashem is, you know, He takes care of everything. So I'm standing there in the middle of the night. I'm starting to eat all my nash. I bought cashews. I bought uh, peanuts. So, Baruch Hashem, my friend comes and picks me up. He takes me to the airport. We sat together. We had a very nice long conversation. And then I had to go to the airport and I had to schmooze there in the airport. Now, this is another amazing thing how Hashem takes care of everything. We just never notice how Hashem is so thoughtful. Hashem is like, listen, I'm going to have to put you through some headaches, but I'm going to take care of you. Now, I never travel with anything. The night before I left, last Motzei Shabbat, I was packing my bag. It was two in the morning and I made myself a cup of tea. As I'm making myself a cup of tea, I'm looking at the box of the tea bags and I was like, you know what? I don't even know why. I was like, let me take a few tea bags. So I took a few tea bags and I put it in my suitcase. I came to the airport. I had to be in the airport all night. Now everything was closed. It's not a big airport. It's a small airport. There was nothing there. All that I could get was hot water. <laughs> but I have tea bags. <laughs> And I was like, look at that, how Hashem already planted in my mind a week ago. From where? The guy the, the, in the airport there, they had like, a, you know, where the security... No, they had like a... a, a, a security. The security, they had hot water. Now, the amazing thing is that when I made coffee, and I bought the sushi and everything, so I took, you know, spoons and forks, and I made the coffee, so I took a lot of sugar with me in case it's not so... So I had everything. All I needed is hot water. Hot water, you have no problem. You can take hot water from anywhere. And I'm like, look at that, Hashem. What a, what a thoughtful God I have. I have a cup of tea. To sit there, I, had, I was like, unbelievable. Yeah, just to have a cup of tea. So I was sitting there in England having a cup of tea. So I was like, look how Hashem, He makes you do things. Sometimes you don't understand why. But you're in a time of stress or a problem and Hashem says, listen, I, I made sure you have tea, I made sure you have sushi and, and sandwiches, you have snacks, you have sugar. Okay, 
Long story short, now is the problem is, you know, the flight is supposed to land at 4.40 in the afternoon. Now I'm coming to, the, to do the check-in, stands a non-Jew, a very nice individual, and he tells me, why are you flying now? Telling you, um, uh, in my mind, I'm like, why are you saying now Lashonara? Why are you putting an evil eye? Why are you telling me why am I flying now? Tell him I'm going back home. He's like, but you know, you're only landing two hours before Shabbos. I told him, why, why are you saying that? <laughs> so I told him, listen, I missed my flight. I had an accident, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, you know, we have a flight on Motsai Shabbat going out of Heathrow. I told him, I want to fly. He's like, listen, the flight is scheduled to go on, li- uh, on time. I told him, listen... Hashem is going to make me land. And now I was like, great, now this guy is telling me why am I flying before Shabbos. So, long story short, we go on the flight. And with my luck, they put me all the way in the back of the plane. So, as we're about to land, I ask the stewardess and I tell her, listen. You know, look. Look. <laughs> Nobody on the flight here has this. I have to be off the plane the first because I got to run out. Can I sit in the front in the landing? She's like, I'm very sorry to tell you, but we're pa- the flight is packed. I don't know even how Hashem made it. I landed at 4.37. Wow. You know, when you go out of the airport and you do the checking of the passports, 20 flights landed at the same time. 20 flights, including four jumbos from America. You're talking about like probably like three, four, five thousand people at the same moment. I don't even know how. As I was going down, this lady tells me, you have an Israeli passport? I'm like, yeah. So she was like, you can do the check right over here. I went in, chick, chick, three seconds, I already had my pass. I go out, there were so many people. There are 10, uh, carousels in, in Ben Gurion. They were packed. They were, the, the, the area was so packed there wasn't any trolleys. Excuse me? You're getting nauseous? I don't even know how. There's no trolleys. I run. My bag came out within three minutes. Now I already had a car, a, a taxi ready to take me to Natanya, and he's a taxi driver from Tzfat. I call him and I'm telling him I'm out. I ran out of the airport, it was five past five. I told him, do you think we can make it to Tzfat? He's like, yes. I jump into the car and he's like, let's do it. We have enough time. It's only five past five. I call my mother, I'm telling her, I mean, I told my mother that if I can catch a cab to Tzfat, I'm not coming. She was like, fine. So I, I told her, listen, I'm not coming. And of course I called my family here in Sfat and nobody answered. Now as, <laughs> now as we, and they think I'm going to Natanya. Now as we're going on Kvishesh, where you can fly like 160 kilometers an hour, a police car. The whole Kvishesh we're driving like, and I'm like, no, come on. Now you have to bring this police car to escort us all the way off the highway anyways don't worry i have trust in hashem now of course i i i was up all night i didn't sleep on the plane because it was a last minute flight they couldn't give me kosher food i didn't eat anything the whole day i'm starving it's six o'clock in the evening i didn't eat nothing from the sushi so i'm like hey wait a minute i have nash i start pulling out my bamba my bananas So I'm eating like a four-year-old, I'm eating bamba, and I have fruit. Long story short, we arrived in Sfat at five minutes past seven. I had time to take a shower, I had time to go to the mikveh, I had time to come here and start fixing things, I had time to sit and have a cup of coffee, I didn't have coffee before the whole day. So Baruch Hashem, I made it to Sfat literally minutes before Shabbat, literally. My wife was happy, my kids were happy, everybody was happy, and the week of adventures ended. And that's when I, that's when I started making the calculation, 
Let's make me, let's make a recap of the last two weeks. Hashem decided to give me the zchut to go to England and to Bemet. It was a big zchut, it was a big merit to influence hundreds and thousands of people that were came, coming to the lectures. I was able to go into these high schools where nobody's able to go into. Uh, I, I spoke to hundreds of students, hundreds, where their teachers were like, we've never seen anything like it. Nobody has ever able to keep them on their tuches for more than five minutes. And it was, so, it was really amazing. It was really, really amazing. You know, when I was talking to the girls at one day the boys' school, one day the girls' school, they, 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 excuse me? Of course I went to the Jewish schools, yeah. Some of the schools were all mixed. Some of the schools, are, they're, they're, they're not religious families. But even the schools that I went to, all the religious families, they have such a problem in England, 10 times worse than anywhere else in the world. Half, if not 80% of their youth are going off the Delech. The whole, it's, it's, a, it's a huge mess there. And it was really unbelievable. I really felt that this entire week was very, very powerful in the, in the spiritual part of it. To a point that literally there was two options to look at it. One option to look at it that I kept saying that the Sitra Achal was not happy with the fact that I'm going to do this uh, trip, that he had to push me down the stairs. This is one way of looking at it. That's how I felt. I'm not going to let that stop me. On the other hand, one can look at it and that's how I saw it, that Hashem says, you know what, I want to see how much bitachon, how much trust you have in me. If you're going to get affected by the fact that you are physically limited and you're going to say, okay, I can't do anything, I'm sorry. Or if you're going to say, no, if I'm required, if I was now drafted by the master of the universe to do a mitzvah, if I'm going to get impressed by a physical problem to stop from doing this mitzvah. Obviously, the trip was booked. There was a ticket, there was lectures scheduled, I had a place to stay, I had a rental car, everything was booked. Meaning that obviously from the heavens they wanted me to go. Now was a mind game, will I not trust Hashem by saying, oh, oh, obviously Hashem doesn't want me to go, then let me stop, let me not go. Or should I say, no, Hashem wants me to have trust in Him and say, you know what? Motzei Shabbat, I'll, I'll, I'll start walking. And the entire week while I was in bed, it was not a fun time. I could not do anything. I could barely even learn. Everybody told me, at least you have an opportunity to sit and learn. How can you learn sitting like that? I couldn't sit up because I couldn't sit. I couldn't lie on my side. I was on my back. So I can hold the book like this for five minutes, for ten minutes. And then I can't hold the book anymore. So the, I did, I did listen to one of my classes and I was like, who's this great speaker? <laughs> no, no, I didn't say that, but I did, li I did listen to one of my classes and I was very crit criticizing myself. How do you say, very critical? Uh, how would you say it? I was critical on myself, but I had to, but I, I, so everybody told me, okay, there's a lot of rabbis online, listen to them. The point it was a week to do a lot of uh, thinking. A lot of thinking and a lot of talking. You have to talk to Hashem a lot. But in my mind, I was constantly, you know, everybody told me, take painkillers, take medication to reduce the inflammation, take this, take that. And I'm like, I don't want to. I don't want to take painkillers because A, I'm not going to feel pain. Then I'm going to start doing all sorts of movements that might hurt me even more. Besides, if Hashem wants me to go through some pain, why should I try to avoid it? If there is a decree from Shemaim that I have to suffer a little bit, I'm going to take it away. So let me be in pain a little bit. Nobody died from pain. There's nothing wrong with having some pain, appreciating Hashem. You know, when you have a lot of pain, it's when you start appreciating when your body actually functions. Which I developed in these five days. Not that I was lacking it before, but Hashem puts you in situations sometimes so you can think of something and you can empower it in you and I was like you know it's all about thanking Hashem it's thanking Hashem now I can't move 
I have to thank Hashem 50 times a day for able, that I'm able to move my body, that I'm able to breathe, that I'm able to, you know, I mean five days I didn't see my living room. I didn't go down, I couldn't go down. I, I was like, if I'm going to go down, I'm, I'm never coming up, I'll have to sleep on the floor. So I was like, look, at some, something so simple, going to the bathroom, putting socks on. So it, it really emphasized what, how important is this whole thanking of Hashem. How much we have to thank Hashem. Hashem just wants you to thank Him. I understood that Hashem wants me to thank Him for, A, for, for having my health. But also to thank Him that, wow, you chose me from so many people to go to inspire other people. This is a schut. This is not an obligation. This is a, a merit. This is not an obligation from Hashem. Go and do what you're supposed to do. You know how many times Hashem gives us the merit to do something to help another person and all I do is complain? That person comes and knocks on my door, help, asks for my help, and instead of saying, wow, Hashem just sent me a person to help, and I'm whining. I want to sleep, he came during dinner, I don't have money, why is he annoying me? Nobody stops and says, wow, I can't believe Hashem sent me a person to help. He gave me now the opportunity to do a huge mitzvah. And I'm not, and I'm, not only that I'm not thanking Hashem for giving me the opportunity, I'm whining and complaining. Now comes the next part of this whole trip. Is that, oh yes, the trip wasn't easy physically. But then comes this whole episode. And in my mind, as this whole happening, I'm praying to Hashem, Hashem, I don't want to be here for Shabbat. My poor kids, they're, one, they're expecting me to come back. My wife worked hard all week. Can't you do something else? I don't want to stand and stay here for Shabbat. I don't want to be uncomfortable. I don't want to be out of my home. I don't want to. And then, as I'm sitting and eating my sandwich, I start singing in the car and I'm clapping and I'm thanking Hashem. I'm telling Hashem, you're unbelievable. You are unbelievable. I have sandwiches. I cannot believe it that you gave me some type of an inspiration to buy sandwiches and sushi and water and, and treats and bananas and nectarines. I don't even, I never travel with food. I don't like traveling with the, with the, with the bags, especially in the security with all the bags and take your shoes off and this off and I hate that. So to add more bags? I was sitting in the car laughing. If somebody would see me, they thought they would think this guy's a nut. He's sitting on the highway with two flat tires and I'm singing in the car and thanking Hashem. And I was like, unbelievable. Obviously, the flat tire had to happen. Obviously, I have to miss the flight. I, you know, everybody was telling me, don't worry, have bitachon, the rescue will come fast and you'll make the flight. I'm like, no, I'm not making this flight. El Al is strict. 8.20, the counters are closed. They're not going to let me go on this flight. And everybody's, no, have bitachon. I said, there's nothing to do with bitachon. I'm not making this flight. I'm making another flight. You know where the bitachon is going to have to have? When, I'm gonna, when the flight is scheduled to land at 4.40, two and a half hours before Shabbat, that's where the bitachon has to be, that the flight is going to land. And I'm going to be delayed. I'm not going to have to camp in the airport. But I caught myself in the, in, the, in the car. And I was like, look how amazing Hashem is. Instead of whining on the fact that I have flat tires and I'm stuck on a highway and I'm going to be delayed. I was saying, wow, I have to thank Hashem that I have water to wash my hands. I have a phone. You know, that when I travel, I... I Usually what I do is I don't change the SIM in my phone. I have a, a device that gives data. And what it does is that I have Wi-Fi for my phone, for my iPad, for my computer, and I feed off this uh, data. And of course, then I can use my phone through the data. Usually what I do is I rent the device and it waits for me when I land and then I give it back. So usually it happens that the last three hours of my trip I don't have data. And it happened to be that this time the person who organized the trip bought me the device and he said keep it and every time you come to London you have it. We just have to pay for the data. So I end up having internet in the car. 
Because usually what I do is I use the GPS in the car to get to the airport. There's Wi-Fi in the airport, that's it. Can you imagine if I didn't have that in the car, I wouldn't be able not to call, not the assistance, not the airline, not anybody. Looking like this, nobody would stop on the highway. I would be st stranded there on the highway. Hashem is so amazing that even when you have to go through a problem, even when He puts you through stress, He says, I only want you to, I want you to, A, no doubt, to have trust in me. And I had such bitachon, and everybody was telling me, why are you taking a flight that is landing two and a half hours before Shabbat? Forget about that you'll never make it to Tzfat. What if you're not going to make it? What if the flight is delayed and in the air it already comes in Shabbat? What are you going to do? What if you land five minutes before Shabbat? What, are you going to sit in the airport like this now, 24? That's what I would have to do. And I was like, no. Hashem, is, Hashem already gave me one slap. That's it. Now Hashem says, now let's see how much bitachon you have. And I had such strong bitachon that I knew I'm going to land on time. But since, besides the bitachon, besides, instead of whining, I was so thankful that I had my food, that I had Wi-Fi, that I had another flight. Can you imagine, it, might, it could be that there wouldn't be any room, you know, that the flight that I came on was packed. Meaning that there was one seat available. For me. The point that I noticed that because I was so thankful for the little that I have, it was miraculous that I came out of the airport in 24 minutes. 24 minutes to get off a packed plane that I was in row 50, going through the passport control. I didn't have to go through the passport where all the people are. I don't know how much you're familiar with Ben Gurion. You go through this huge uh, slant and then you find 5,000 people waiting for the passport control. I did it in the top. And then I come out just so you understand how packed it was, there wasn't any trolleys. And my suitcase comes like maybe after three minutes. That last time when I returned, my suitcases came last. And I'm out of the airport. I was like, this is unbelievable. Even the guy was like, I was sure you're coming out at six. And then of course the whole way to Tzfat was, was uh, completely open. Five past seven, I'm here in Tzfat. With enough time to have a cup of coffee. <laughs> Take a shower, go to the mikveh, come here, make sure, sure, sure everything's here good. And the conclusion of the whole thing is that Hashem, needless to say, wants you just to constantly trust Him. And says, listen, you're going to have to go through all sorts of obstacles. You're going to have to go all, all through all sorts of tests. You're going to miss a flight, a car accident, flat tire, back pains. That's the routine. That's the, pa the path in our life. There's go constantly going to be all these obstacles. And, and you can't avoid it, you can't change it, and that's what's going to happen. So A, you have to have unbelievable trust and faith and bitachon and emunah in Hashem, that everything comes from Hashem, and everything is, is for, the, for the good. But here comes another element, and that's what Hashem wants. Hashem wants our thanks, our appreciation. And most people are not appreciative of what they have. They look at the empty part of the basket. They don't look at what they have. And even if we even they, when they look at what they have, they're not appreciative and definitely don't thank Hashem. How many times a day do we look up to Shemaim and we say, Wow, Hashem, thank you, you know, I'm breathing today. Wow, another breath. I can't avoid the headache. This is our life. Our life is going to be full of headaches. Constantly. Hashem wants to see in the struggle, He's going to throw a few good things. And He wants to see if you're going to be very, very thankful for those little things. I, I was catching myself sitting in the car and I had all the reasons to be upset. The car broke down, I'm missing my flight, all these things. And instead of that, I was thanking Hashem that I had a sandwich and I had Wi-Fi and I, I, was, I was beside her. I said, Hashem, I can't believe it. You're so amazing how you made me take food. 
I would never take the food. I would never even go into, I would probably most likely say, are you out of your mind to go out of my way to get coffee? Forget about the coffee. Who needs coffee? Just go to the airport. And again, you need to be late. Hashem was so kind. And of course, the Yetzirah is saying, you see, you got the coffee. And since you got the coffee, then that's why you had this accident. And I was like, no. I got the coffee in order to get food because the accident had to happen. For whatever reason, maybe Hashem wanted me in this place in the universe where I parked for two hours on the island next to the highway. Maybe somebody had to say some Tehillim there. Maybe it was a place in the universe that didn't have Kedusha. And Hashem says, I want you to park there. You're going to be bored. Say some Tehillim. So the accident had to happen. Everything had to happen. But Hashem was so nice, he's like, okay, make, let me make for you a detour that you have at least of food. You had tea bags, you had sugar, you had everything. Look how he made your, 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 your travel comfortable. And Hashem puts us in situations because he wants to see not how much I complain, is how much I'm thanking him for the little things. And instead of being stuck on the highway for five hours, I was only stuck on the highway for an hour and a half. And Hashem says, let's see if you're going to thank me for, oh, thank you for it, that it's only an hour and a half and I don't have to sit here for five hours. It was rush hour, could have been, I mean, I, who says that the, the, the emergency service had to come so fast? I could have been literally stuck there for five, six hours. So Hashem constantly says, listen, there is going to be a situation with some positive, some negative. The more you appreciate and you thank me and you acknowledge the positive, the negative will start disappearing. And I literally, you know, it's not that I didn't know it, but you're busy with your life, you ignore things. And this whole two weeks brought me to a point to understand how important it is to constantly thank Hashem. That's what He wants. He wants us to thank Him. Our life is full of challenges, full of problems, full of hardship, full of headaches. That's normal. We can't avoid that. But Hashem says, just thank me for the little thing that you have. You have a headache, at least thank me that I created Tylenol. You have a problem, at least thank me for, for the, the solution that I came up with. The power of thanking is so powerful that the more thankful you are, the obstacle or the challenge or the headache gets, gets slowly, slowly smaller and smaller and smaller or completely disappears. If you remember, I mean, you, I, don't, I don't expect you to remember much, but two, years, uh, two weeks ago on Shabbat, no weeks, two, sorry, last week ago on Shabbat, I, told, I said a story. The reason why I say if you remember because it's what I broadcast on Erev Shabbat, so even anyone who was not in the class or in Shabbat meal should have heard that. But the story says that there was once a group of Hasidim that they were uh, coming back from a Shabbat by their rabbi and they're all on a wagon. Sunday morning, they're sitting in the wagon going back to their village and they're all excited. They had such an uplifting Shabbat, such an amazing, inspiring Shabbat, and they're talking of how, what inspired each and one, any one of them from their visits to the Rebbe. In this wagon sat a very simple uh, merchant that said, you know, guys, I'm not a big Hasid like you. I'm a simple merchant, but I also was very inspired in this Shabbat by the, this encounter. So they told him, yeah, what inspired you during the Shabbat? So he told them, actually what inspired me was not during Shabbat, it was on Motzei Shabbat. On Motzei Shabbat, I had a meeting with the Rebbe. And the Rebbe asked me, what do you do for a living? I told him I'm a merchant. And the Rebbe asked me, what is your uh, uh, order in your day? So he says, I wake up very early in the morning. I drive to the, to the town close by. I buy all my merchandise. Then I go back home and I pray, and after that I go and sell, sell the merchandise. So the rabbi told him, why don't you first pray? He says, listen rabbi, if I'm going to first pray, I'm going to come to the market so late, there's nothing going to be to buy. 
I'm not going to buy, I'm not going to have anything, any merchandise to buy. So I buy first the merchandise, then I pray. Unfortunately, it's late, but at least I have what to sell. So the Rebbe gave him a, told him a story. And he told him that once there was a poor person that didn't have any money, and the only way for him to make money was to travel around different villages and to teach Torah. So he went around for a very long period, taught Torah. After three years on the way back home, he had to stop in one of the villages for Shabbat. And he had a sack of money, of all the money that he saved. He didn't know what to do with it, because on Shabbat he couldn't hide it. He couldn't carry it with him because the gold coins will be mukse. So he decided to trust the, the owner of the inn and he gave him the sack full of coins. And in the sack of coins were 12 gold coins and one coin made out of copper. Came Otsei Shabbat, he goes back to the owner of the inn and he gives him back the bag of money. Right away he opens ba the bag to see if everything is there. He finds the 12 gold coins, but he can't find the copper coin. He gets so uptight, he starts turning the sack inside out and looking and everywhere. The owner of the inn tells him, what's the problem? She says, listen, I'm missing the copper coin. Maybe you took it. The owner of the inn tells him, I just gave you back 12 gold coins. Why would I take the copper coin? I would take the gold coin. I gave you back the 12 gold coins. Therefore, why should I take the copper coin? So this Rebbe told this merchant, every night before you go to sleep, you give to God the most precious thing you have, your soul. And in the morning, after you sleep, Hashem gives you back your soul, the most precious thing. You think that something so minor like your Parnasa, Hashem is going to take away from you? After He gave you back your, your soul? He's giving you back the gold coins, the copper coin He's not going to give you? Your Parnasa, Hashem cannot give you something so small? So the merchant said that from now I understood that I first have to pray and after that I'll go and buy my merchandise. If Hashem is able to give me back my soul, to give me my Parnasa, Hashem can do also. Sometimes we find ourselves in a situation that Hashem puts me in a situation and I think that Hashem cannot take me out of this situation. He put me in the situation. Well, something so small, Hashem can make the flight land exactly on time, then I will go out and the taxi will have enough time to take me and the road will be completely open and I'll make it up to Tzfat 100% happy. And what, Hashem can't do that? I can't have the minimum of the trust that Hashem can do whatever He wants. Anything that Hashem wants, He can do. If I give Him the option of doing it. And to give Him the option of doing it is first of all having the trust that He can do it. But also to thank Him even the, before He does it. I thank, I, I thank you for giving me the opportunity to do something. And the point is that we very rare, very rarely we thank Hashem. Okay, here and there we say Baruch Hashem maybe 50 times a day. But we don't really mean, mean it or we don't really know what it means. And very few people really say Baruch Hashem, wow. How many times do you really say that? How are you? Baruch Hashem. How was your day? Baruch Hashem. Ma Baruch Hashem. Say, say something else. But even if I mean the Baruch Hashem, very few times a day I actually stop my day and say, Hashem, thank you. Thank you. I really thank you. You're so amazing. And really, that's what Hashem wants from us. Hashem wants us to thank Him, to acknowledge all the good that He does, and to also acknowledge that the bad that he does is to see what's good in it and to thank him. And the more we thank Hashem, the, the negative starts disintegrating. It just evaporates. It just doesn't exist. Because we create the, the negative. I mean, Hashem just gives the idea of the negative and we start pumping it up. And when we have a positive attitude of, of, of not only trusting Hashem, but constantly this hodaya, this thanking. Somebody asked me this week about praying, why praying is so important. And I told him praying is divided in a few categories. One of the categories of praying is asking. Is that what's called bakasha. One of them is called praising, lehalel, to praise Hashem. But one of them is called hodaya, is thanking. 
I pray to thank Hashem. And Hashem wants and likes when I thank Him. You know, when my kids, they finish eating, I only tell them, just say thank you. I don't need you to do much. You don't have to do the dishes. You don't have to do anything. I mean, I want them to help around and clear the table. And I tell them, just say thank you. Say, tell your mom, thank you. She, she cooked for one hour. She, she could just give you a bowl of cereal and tell you, just eat that. Eat an apple. She stood over the stove. She made a meal. Thank her. Thank you, mom. Thank you, mommy, for making me a meal. So I constantly like teaching my kids to thank them. I tell my kids, thank you, Rebbe, for teaching you. Go after the class and tell him, thank you. I might have not understood one word from what you said, but thank you. And thanking is such a powerful thing, not only for Hashem, even people, you take a taxi, thank you, thank you for taking me. You go into the store, somebody helps you, thank you. Two simple words that Hashem loves, just the, the power of thanking. You know that when you thank somebody for doing something so simple, they, they, they treat you completely different. Sometimes all it takes is a few words, you just say to a person, I appreciate your, your hard work. Oh wow, he appreciate me. Suddenly you give them the, 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 the energy or the desire to continue. So, Baruch Hashem, to conclude this uh, beautiful two weeks. In a few weeks I'm going already again on another trip. I don't know what Hashem is already planning me for that trip. But, excuse me? Smooth sailing. Bezad Hashem, there, there are three more trips on the, on the, on the calendar. In a few weeks I'm going to, to America, to the East Coast, a few weeks later to the West Coast, a few weeks later another tour, tour in Europe. I have another three trips coming up and now I'm saying, Hashem, I'm already thanking you for the back aches and the headaches and the cars and I'm thanking you for everything. Just hopefully it's not going to be so painful and, and Bezad Hashem, I hope the next trips will be smooth and painless and uh, no missing flights and no problems. But the point, at least Hashem, I mean, I, I always say, listen, I have the schut of going to teach other people. I need to also learn something. So Hashem says, listen, I'm going to make you learn too. And in order for you to learn something, you have to be very uh, humble to accept what the lessons that Hashem gives you. As painful as they are, as inconvenient as they are, one needs to, A, look in, in his own acts if I'm doing something wrong. Maybe I did something wrong. But more than that, you have to look in the g spiritual GPS. Why did Hashem put me here? Hashem blew up these tires and made me stuck on the highway and missed the flight so I can tell Him thank you for letting me buy a sandwich. That's the, the, it all boiled down. For me to appreciate the fact that Hashem gave me a spark in my mind. How many times you do something, you don't even know why you do that. You're like, why did I do I, don't, I, I couldn't figure out till that moment why Hashem made me buy a bag full of food. So this whole thing was for me to sit and say thank you Hashem, not to say Shakol Niyabit Baro, to say wow Hashem, you're so amazing. You took care of my diet now, I have food till it's fat. I'm not going to be hungry. Unbelievable. Unbelievable that three days before that when I bought coffee I had sugar bags in my bag. Why would I take sugar bags? I put the sugar in the coffee, I taste it, it tastes good. Why do I? I'm not this type of person that takes sugar bags and napkins and I was like look how amazing and Hashem puts in your path so many things that you're gonna you know Hashem will make a person drown but He's gonna create the rope from the from the from the ship or the on the of the boat to to you to grab on he will put you in a dangerous situation but he will already create the solution Mo Hashem being thankful to Hashem is so powerful is literally what Hashem doesn't care about that we we keep thinking that Hashem wants us to to concentrate on these big things Hashem says just say thank you just appreciate the fact that I was able to save you. Yes, I did put you in a situation that is life-threatening, but I saved you. And don't whine and complain, why did you do that? Thank me for actually saving you. And Baruch Hashem, 
we have to constantly carry out with us this power of thanks. This is called in Hebrew, Hodaya, constantly be with thanking of Hashem for the, all the miracles that He does with us. And one should attribute a couple minutes every day, maybe every two, three hours, take a stop. And you know, the doctor now told me that I have to drink a lot. He told me you have to drink three liters a day of water. And he told me, promise me that you're going to drink a lot. And I made it my business that every hour I stop and I drink two or three cups and that I bought myself water all the time. And I said, you know what? The doctor told me to drink a lot. I'm going to learn from that that every time that I drink, I stop and I say two minutes, thank you to Hashem. Thank you for waking me up, for giving me the energy to walk, for giving me the energy to talk, for giving me the peace of mind not to get upset at little things. And you know what? It's unbelievable. You take two, three minutes every two, three hours. You make a little stop and you thank Hashem for everything that He does for you. I can guarantee to you, your day is going to be much, much more brighter. You give Hashem the, the cheshek, the desire to be like, wow, He's appreciative. She's thanking me. I'm going to make her day go ten times better right now. The same way that a person feels the, the inspiration to give you more when you appreciate so much more so the master of the universe. Mezad Hashem, we're going to thank Hashem for giving us such a beautiful, beautiful life. And what we should take from that is constantly thanking Hashem for every little thing. And not only in the, in the words out of the Sidu, in our own words. And not only thanking Hashem all the time, that's a given. It's thanking everybody around me. Whether it's my wife for cooking the meal, whether it's my cleaning lady for cleaning the floor, whether it's my assistant that took the messages for me, it doesn't matter what it is. Any person, the person comes and picks up the trash, nothing's going to hurt if you tell him, thank you, I know you work hard, thank you so much. You thank a person, you know, you see soldiers on the street, you can thank them, thank you for protecting us, I know you work hard. So many things what one can thank another person and you know when you thank somebody you literally it's like the sunshine that they need to hear. Sometimes that's all they need to hear is a little thank. You know a teacher teaches your child once a week, once a month call the teacher thank you for teaching you know a few weeks ago was my son's they had a party. I don't even know who was my teacher what did I see his teacher three times in the past year. We walked up to her and I told her thank you so much for taking care of my son and teaching him and caring about him and sometimes that's what it takes is a little word as other shame we should constantly be on the motion of thanking and guaranteed that as the more we appreciate and the more we thank we bring back this energy this good positive energy back to us and you know now all is left is to thank Hashem for preparing the redemption and that he already has a Mashiach ready for us and we understand that we have to be a few more days in exile, but we thank him for that too. And we are already thanking him in advance for sending Mashiach. Hashem, we should see it very soon with our eyes and always be thankful.